almost five centuries, the Forbidden City in the centre of Beijing served as the home of the emperor and his household. It was the ceremonial and political centre of Chinese government, and like many of its type, had its share of intrigue. Built in the early 1400s, it is a labyrinthine complex of nearly a thousand buildings and 9,000 rooms. Over five centuries, it was home to 24 emperors, their families, and often a huge entourage. In 1987, UNESCO listed the Forbidden City as a World Cultural Heritage Site. Now the mysterious city is undergoing one of its biggest ever restorations. The Forbidden City has benefited greatly from Beijing hosting the 2008 Olympic Games. The multi-million dollar 10-year restoration program is a joint initiative of the Palace Museum and the World Monuments Fund. It is largely a United States Chinese cultural initiative. Among the priorities is restoration of the Qianlong Garden. The private garden of the Qing Emperor Qianlong has never been fully open to the public and remains relatively untouched since imperial times. Qianlong Garden will not only restore architectural and physical integrity to the garden in its buildings and interiors, gardens, rockeries and plantings, but will also rehabilitate and modernize the infrastructure of the garden and provide new heating, drainage and electricity, which are essential if the buildings are going to survive and be accessible to the public as they never have been in the past. This is by far the biggest restoration the building has undergone in centuries. 1,400 workers and engineers are concentrated on the crumbling imperial residence. The restoration work previously done on the Forbidden City was all in order to protect or save the structure. For example, if part of the palace was broken or had some water damage, then we would repair it. But this time, we are actively initiating renovation on a large scale. This is the first time in a hundred years work has been done on this scale. The deputy director of the Palace Museum, Jin Hongkui, said the cooperation between the US and China would become a blueprint for similar projects in the future. The American side uses technology more to analyze the components of the ancient materials and skills why they did it in a certain way and what the advantages of it are. That's what we learned the most from our colleagues outside China. But a technological approach is at odds with the attitudes in many corners of the Forbidden City. Since 1924, it has been under the charge of the Palace Museum, whose extensive collection of artwork and artefacts were built upon the imperial collections of the Ming and Qing dynasties. For restoration work, the old-fashioned skills of touch still have the upper hand, according to one artisan. There have been conflicts and problems in our cooperation, but the key thing is how we best deal with it. Our American colleagues are more technically advanced. We rely much more on traditional craftsman skills. They are more comfortable with machines, but machines are good when it comes to examining. For reconstructing paintings like this, we still have to use craftsman skills. The benefits of such an approach will be there for all to see when the restoration is completed and the Forbidden City reveals its secrets to an eagerly waiting world.